the reason we're down here, we might have to talk to you for a couple of days, talk to you about a bunch of things. Are you good with that? So I guess we're the first Canadians you've seen in a while? Canadian. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. We're requesting that Canadian government for a long time ago. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, it's not as easy as it can be, you know. I'm actually very happy to answer. On September the 9th, 2002, the American government sent us notice that they had captured a Canadian in Afghanistan. They didn't identify him uh, in their communication, and for other sources, I guess, we found, we assumed that this was Omar that had been uh, captured by the American forces. In uh, February 2003, the first delegation of Canadians went down to visit Omar, and part of that delegation was a senior agent with uh, Canada's spy service, CSIS. He had been following the Khadr family for, for years. You look tired. What's happening? You see on day one that Omar is elated to see the Canadian officials and that if he cooperates and is, is you know, tells them what they want to hear, he's going to be able to leave Guantanamo. Day two, he realizes that's not true and you see the effect on Omar of that sudden realization they're not there to help him. What are you scared to say? Why don't you just tell us what it is you have to say? <laughs> The condition of Omar when I first met him uh, was was pretty bad off. I, I looking at him, you wouldn't think he was going to survive. can say about him is that he was a kid. He was 15 year old. He was a typical 15 year old kid. Maybe, maybe, you know, raised a little differently than most of us. But that's, the, the child was still there. That's what was prevalent in him was the child. Child soldiers uh, are the subject for the United Nations of protection, uh, of rehabilitation. Um, and uh, not of the same kind of treatment that would apply to those who commit those kinds of offenses when they are adults. You know, I understand this is stressful, but, you know, by, 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 by using this as a strategy to talk to us, it's not going to be any more helpful. I mean, we've got a limited amount of time, and, you know, we've heard this story before. You don't care about me, that's what... Well, I do care about you, but I want I want to talk to the to the honest Omer that I was talking to yesterday. I don't want to talk to this Omer. It wasn't honest. Yes, it was. You see, you're not going to believe me. Well, look me straight in the eyes and tell me that you're being honest. I am being honest. Oh, look, I was very disappointed yesterday. Uh, I think that uh, you know I think we made a really really good start. And I was, I was very proud of you. I was very proud of the way you behaved. You behaved like a man. You know, you were forthright and honest. And I think yesterday you got kind of upset and you were kind of worried about things and maybe, you know, maybe you were talking to somebody, but... This was the Canadian agents participating in, a, in, a, in a basically a joint venture to exploit this uh, young man as a source of intelligence with the U.S. government. Well, that's 
difficult to say. Eh? What I can tell you is it certainly won't hurt you to be fully cooperative. Pardon me? Okay. The bottom line is that they're breaking the law in these videos because at the time, as everyone understood, these detainees were in a legal black hole, as the, as the English Court of Appeal had put it. It was, it was obvious to everyone who looked at the situation, including the United Nations and by then some American courts, that this was unlawful. Right now, Omar, it doesn't get any worse. It's never going to get any worse for you now, but it may get worse. In what sense? It may get more torturing for an isolated room with no stuff. Yeah, put in an isolated room with no stuff? That's, I mean, I wouldn't consider that to be torturing. I don't think you can handle that for one night. No? Well, I mean, fortunately, I'm not in a position where I have to, that has to be, uh, something I have to worry about. You know? I have to go back and write a report. They're going to laugh at me because they're going to say, well, this guy's not cooperating. This guy's jerking your chain. He's wasting your time. He's intent on lying to you. I'm not lying. If you're tortured, then I was tortured. Probably say more than what I said. But when I look at that tape, I see the absolute callowness of the interrogators, but you also see the desperation. It's like the salesman whose job's on the line. He's got to sell a car or he's fired. If you're smart, tell me something that can help me, that can show my government that you're willing to help us against a group of people who are bent on doing bad things to us. You want me to lie? How do you lie? I don't want you to lie. I just want you to tell the truth. That's why I told you the truth. You don't like the truth.